do you know in India, in the lower courts and subordinate courts, we have three crore cases pending. And in high courts, there are over 41 million cases pending. And even in the Supreme Court, there are 65,000 cases pending. These are staggering numbers. But amid these numbers, there was one justice, Justice Ranjan Gogoi, who was known for his consistent performance in delivering justice to a time-bound manner. In fact, he brought closer to many contentious issues in India. One such is Ram Janambhumi case, and then NRC in Assam. Though his verdicts are now being debated for its fairness or lack of it, and added to that has been the, this suspicion or cynicism over Indian judiciary, whether it can uh, withstand the political pressure or whether it's neutral or not. Recently, Justice Gogoi has made his transition from judiciary to legislature, and he now has a different perspective about judiciary or about legislature. And today we are lucky that he will share with us that perspective. And it's an opportunity to ask him to crystal gaze into the future of Indian judiciary. So may I request Justice Gogoi to talk to us about what he thinks should be the roadmap of Indian judiciary. You could speak from the dais podium or you could speak from uh, the chair No, also. Kaushik, I think I, I have something different in mind. I had a speech prepared yes, for sir. about 10 minutes. Yeah. I don't think I'll read out that speech. So you'd like me to ask the question? No, uh, let, me, let me say something yes. to the audience and then you can interact with me. Sure. There's been a, just a sudden change of mind. You know, I keep changing my mind. How important uh, the judiciary as a constitutional body is concerned, perhaps need not be emphasized. You want a $5 trillion economy, but you have a ramshackle judiciary. What is your opinion of your judiciary? Not very positive? Do you know? that in the year 2020, when the functioning of every organization was somewhat at a low ebb, including the judiciary, the Indian judiciary succeeded in adding about 60 lakh more cases at the subordinate level. The figure from three crores, what Kaushik mentioned, has gone up to nearly 4 crores. We were struggling with 3 crores. Where are we with, 40 cro with 4 crores? The figures in the High Court has gone up by about 3 lakhs and in the Supreme Court by about 6-7 thousand. It is in this context that perhaps time has come when we have a road map. Why do we discuss about the road map in this forum, this is not the forum. The forum is elsewhere. We do it because the forums elsewhere have not done it. This is something for the judiciary to work out itself, which has not been done. Now, the roadmap what I have in mind is have the right man for the job. You don't appoint judges as you appoint officers in the government. To judge is a full-time commitment. It is a passion. There are no working hours. It's a 24-7 job. You wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, remember a point, go, jot it down. How many people understand that? This is how a judge works. In a country of uh, uh, eight, over 20, uh, 2 million lawyers, about 18, lakh to 18 to 20 lakh is the lawyer population. Can't we find uh, 20, 25,000 people, the right kind of people? The appointments have become a matter of routine. 
you sit in a competitive examination, you pass, depending on the marks you get, you get a pie treat. That's not the way. Appointments in the highest judiciary, the much debated, what is the role of the political executive? Why the political executive is sitting on the appointments? Why are they not clearing it? Half the high courts in the country are functioning at 50% of the strength. Delhi High Court has 31 judges against a sanction strength of 62. Similarly, the other day I was interacting with somebody, Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh is doing with about 40% of the judges. Why the appointments are not coming through? Is it that difficult? These are, these are areas that need to be tackled. When you appoint a judicial officer, when you appoint a judge, train him up. He needs to be constantly reminded that yours is a commitment to the nation. It's not a 10 to 5 job. When you go to the academy, the judicial academy, the gorgeous judicial academy in Bhopal, what is being taught? The laws of the seas, the laws of the oceans. Nothing about judicial ethics, nothing about judicial morals, nothing about how to write judgments, nothing about how to conduct court proceedings. I'm sorry. I've come all the way from Delhi to tell you what I feel about the system. The system has not worked. It's not worked for more reason than one. Commercial, commercial cases, if you want a thriving economy, you must have a, a forum for deciding commercial disputes. Nobody is going to come to invest unless you have a robust system. Investments mean disputes. Disputes require resolution. Where is the mechanism? Commercial Courts Act. Every conceivable commercial dispute has been brought within the purview of the Commercial Courts Act. Anything above three lakhs of rupees is a commercial dispute which goes to the Commercial Court. All right, you have a fair, you have a quick procedure to deal with these cases. But then, who is applying the law? The same judge who is doing the normal cases. Arbitration. The award passed by a Chief Justice of India is questioned before a district judge. The award passed by the Chief Justice of India is challenged before a district judge. What does the poor fellow do? He sits on it. Then there is an appeal to the High Court and there is an appeal to the Supreme Court. So the whole idea of going to arbitration that we don't want to go to court is defeated. This is the road map that we have to work on. And let me tell you, I don't think a beginning has been made. Through your forum, through this platform, I call upon my brother judges to engage themselves in drawing up a road map. It's not that difficult. Some time has to be found for this.